half past seven and I don't want to go home yet. So I've come down to Tarn House, which is a place we came to a couple of years ago when we did some star trails and shot the Milky Way. But I didn't realise there was a waterfall down here. So I thought, I'll take a puddle down. Now I don't know if this is the full waterfall, but I think it's called Tom Gill Falls. That is quite quaint. So I've had a little bit of a play about. It's a bit tricky getting down onto the edge because there's a bit of a drop, water, slippery rocks. That's a recipe for me to fall in. So I've done a bit of um, working the scene, I guess, to see if I could find a composition I liked. I haven't needed any filters because it's dark down here that the, the video is making it actually look lighter than it is. Um, I've just put um, a big aperture and that slowed the exposure down. So what I've ended up with, if you can see, we'll focus in a minute. As I was saying, what I've ended up with is the ferns just framing the waterfall and a fallen tree in this corner just leading in from the bottom corner and up through the frame. I'm sorry it's not focusing so well. It does have a bit of a paddy when it tries to focus on the back of the camera screen. But yeah, it's well worth wandering down here. I'm going to have a, a tootle on down. That shot was three seconds at f14, ISO 100. And as I say, no filters needed. It's a little bit of a walk to come down. I'm sure this will focus, that's it. And there's a little fall up there as well. But I like this one, it has a slightly better flow of water. And I quite like the ferns at the edge. going to turn around and go back to the car or at least to have a wander around town house again but I thought I'd, I could hear a lot more rushing water so I thought I'd just take a bit of a further wander down the path and I'm ever so glad I did because I think this is actually Tom Gill Falls and it's pretty impressive so I passed around for a few minutes trying to find a composition that I like. And we've got these tree roots. I really would have liked to include this tree here, but I've kind of limited myself because we were camping, uh, wild camping. I only bought one lens with me, which is the Nikon 1755. I think here I could possibly really have done with the 10 to 20, but you live and learn. But obviously I, there's only so much gear that I can carry with me. So I faffed around and I'm not sure that this is going to focus yet again. I've come up with this composition. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Yeah, it's showing up a little bit light. But essentially I've managed to get this tree stump with a little greenery, then back to the waterfalls, and then there's just a little bit of light coming in up here. Um, and I've evened the light out at the top because it is very bright up here. I've used um, a 0.6 soft grad and I've used a reverse grad and it's actually worked quite nicely. Well, Tom Gill Falls just keep on giving. I can't do um, any sort of recording down near the waterfalls because it is just so so noisy so I thought I'd come back up the top but obviously I just wanted to show you that is, is amazing and I really do wish I had the 10 to 20 with me but I didn't come out to shoot waterfalls I came out to do landscape but down there I managed to get a shot of the waterfall coming down and then the green bush on the right hand side and I've done two shots I've done one with the polarizer at full effect and one without it and I'll post those up to, those two up next just to show you the difference that the polarizer gives you um, I, I use the Lee 
landscape polarizer, which is considerably thinner than the, the standard polarizer, and is an absolute monkey to get into its holder without cross threading. But it's worth its weight in gold for situations like that. Again, I didn't need any filters because it's dark down there, and the polarizer did help <coughs> just to cut out some of the sunlight at the top. But it's a um, it's a fair old height to get down here. Volume is about to get really bad because I'm heading back to the falls. So I will just let you enjoy Congill Falls. up here it's been cracking a few hours three hour trip up last night i think it's about oh, i don't know 10 o'clock and people are just starting to arrive at town house the wind has picked up a little bit so um there's no real reflections to be had and the sky's a bit yeah although there are some quite nice clouds coming but i could stay here all day unfortunately i've got to get home and do domestics and things so good camp i was geared up to do it on my own um set myself a little challenge that i would wild camp on my own because i'm such a scaredy cat but dan arrived so i didn't have to do that so there'll be another time that i i am going to do it it's been a little bit of a strange trip um andy hasn't been here this time um, i think it's the first trip i've done without him and uh yeah it's been a bit weird but he's replaced his Nikon kit. I'll leave him to tell you what he's replaced it with. He's getting to grips with that this weekend. So hopefully on the next trip he'll be up here uh, or wherever we happen to go and normality will be resumed. It's a bit like having your wingman missing. So he's been a huge help to me over the years. So thanks for that Andy. Check out his vlog. He's on here, Andy Sheeda. And uh, I will catch up with you guys on the next trip. See you later.